And where's Amazon's headquarters? The public relations people told us to come to 1516 Second Avenue between Pike and Pine in Seattle. We didn't see anything that looked vaguely cutting edge. No corporate drives or office towers. Just a heroin needle exchange and an old building called Columbia. And there it was, the logo known to every web shopper in the world. Upstairs, it doesn't look very high-tech either. More like a college dorm than a corporate headquarters. Now, I've heard a lot about your desk. It's a door with mm -hmm. four-by-fours. Come on. <laughs> what? I mean, you, you, you can no. afford a better desk than that. It's a symbol yeah. of spending money on things that matter to customers and not spending money on things that don't. According to my calculations, you yourself are worth somewhere in the vicinity of nine or ten billion dollars today. I only say that because I've got a follow-up question. Okay. What's with the Honda? <laughs> this is a perfectly good car. <laughs> in July of 1995, from this modest ranch house outside Seattle, Bezos sold his first book. Today, he has five huge warehouses in the United States and Europe, packed not only with books, but with CDs and movies. A while ago, I bought a few books from Amazon. This time, after I logged on, the computer greeted me back, welcoming me by name. Is this you? That's, That's me. you. That's me. Okay. Uh -huh. The computer also remembered my past orders, and after comparing me with other customers who'd bought the same books, it calculated which new books I might like to buy. The Untouchable, The Comfort of Strangers, Death in Summer, Breakfast on Pluto, I Married a Communist. That's awfully good. I mean, frankly, so it's very good because I've already bought two of those books in bookstores. That's because people who have your same mm -hmm. sort of buying profile, that electronic soulmate, have This is really scary. I've read a lot of these books and bought many of the others. Now, every time I use your website, you learn more about me. Yes. One of your employees has said that you collect half a gigabyte, whatever that is, of information on your customers every day. That's about 350 floppy disks worth. Mm. What do you do with that information? That's the data that allows us to predict or try to predict what, you know, uh, what books and videos and music that you would like that you don't that you haven't discovered yet. When Bezos left that Wall Street job in 1994, he followed that old American edict, go west, young man. The way I made the decision to leave Wall Street and do this was, you know, it'll sound geeky to you, but um, it was a regret minimization framework. So this is how I actually made that's the decision. Sort of, if I understand it, if I can translate that into English I can deal with, does that mean um, I want to live my life so that in a few decades from now I'm not going to regret it? That's exactly right. Uh, I want to have lived my life in such a way that when I'm 80 years old, I've minimized the number of regrets that I have.